Well, here we are again. It's the Barry and Joe show. Barry Funkhauser here with Joe. And look, it's Jason from the Nadas. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hey, oh, man. Thanks, Jason. I we think already said in the right direction. Is he over there, Barry? No, he's over there. No, right? that's wrong. It's oh, wait, is he way. over there? We're he... backwards. You're both over oh, there. Oh, we're backward. Oh, okay. So he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> we're still trying to figure out this video thing. It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, radio we're guys with a camera. That's uh, I know. dangerous. It's so sick. Ooh, it's That's not good. I'm trying to center myself, and I'm wrong. So we'll just we'll we'll just live with it. <laughs> All right. So first off, for our fans, for anybody who doesn't know, just give us your elevator pitch on who the Nadas are, where you come from, and how long you've been around. You got 30 seconds. Go. Yeah, we're a band from Iowa. We started in 1993, which is 30 years ago, and uh, we've put out I don't know a baker's dozen plus records and stuff like that and we've toured the country for years and years and years and but we haven't been to california for a long time so we are coming back to california to promote our new record called come along for the ride time nice. when, was, when was the last time you were in california how long is it obviously pre-covid uh pre-covid it's probably been even longer than that seven eight years and one of the problems with being in a band for 30 years and playing a lot of the same places over and over again is i have zero comprehension of a timeline it's all this <laughs> So like five years and 15 years ago are all the same for me. Well, okay. 30 years. You don't look a lick over 31. So I have questions here. That's What's gray, going down? Man. There's no gray there. You're, you're our age. Well, I guess uh, you probably start when you were a teenager. Because he uses right? hair club for men, man. He it gets the gray out. It gets uh -huh. the gray out. Right. Uh, <laughs> in 93, well, I'm, I turned 49 two days ago. So. Oh, me too not two days ago but very 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 close so congratulations happy 49 yeah. to you yeah 49 hits harder than the other years for me <laughs> yes. weird. This one's i have fun. heard things things yeah so um yeah i mean we i started freshman year in college pretty much um i think i was a freshman in 92 actually but so i started playing and, right. and then mike joined he and i mike butterworth and we started the band in 93. So that's when it started. What university at Iowa? Uh, Iowa State University. So Iowa State. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But these <laughs> days we hold no real collegiate affiliation anymore because we, <laughs> we've played all the college towns for all the years and, and we have friends and memories from all those places. So, and now my kid, one of my kids goes to Iowa, the other school. So, oh, the other school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get, I get how that goes. So, being on the road, you've been okay. So you've been touring for thirty years. You've been traveling around, and you just said that you had a lot of collegiate towns. Okay, I'm going to ask you the question then. Okay, what's your favorite collegiate town to play? Ooh. Or has it changed because of the he just no, not a good no, changed? not unfair question. I no, I'm that's not an unfair down. question because he just said he, <clears throat> Joe. He just said. Everything blends together. He's not going to be able to answer this because oh. it's on the same day to the guy. Yeah. Bad question. Wanna, Move on. See, I just want to see if he's been to Chico and if he enjoyed it there. And if it's like, you know, a good university town in California that he liked. Man. It just kind of like, because it kind of fits with their music. That's all. I have all not I'm been to Chico. And I guess I'm, at this point, I'm probably aged out of playing the college scene. But <laughs> that wasn't one of them that we played, unfortunately. But I have to admit, I have another problem with your question, which is I have like this paral paralyzing effect when someone asks me about a favorite thing because I have like oh. so many favorite things all over, the, you know, so many. Not a fair question. Can't ask years. a favorite anything. Not even ice cream. Like watch this. Joe, Joe what's your favorite ice cream? Chocolate. I have no oh. problem with questions like this. He's, I will answer. I'll give like you a us. favorite all the time. Well, I <laughs> a weakness and it's something I'm trying to work on. So try me out on the ice cream one. Okay. What about you? What's your favorite ice cream? Oh, um, <laughs> See, uh, it's good. This is the entire interview now. Now we're just going to uh, wait 20 minutes for him to say vanilla. Cookies and cream. <laughs> cookies and cream. All right. I'm in. I realize that it's like a real weakness I have and I'm, I'm trying to improve on it. Like, because you don't care what my actual favorite is. You just want to hear something. And I could just say something. But instead, I. Exactly. Like, That's all we care about. Favorite is. And I can't do it. <laughs> well, do you still. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to ask you your favorite then. But I will ask you now that you've been on the road for so long, do you still enjoy getting out on the road and do so, you travel differently are you all in a band still or are you like 
flying to places and then like driving around. Well, in this case, like coming to California, we're flying as a duo, an acoustic duo, and then we're nice. driving to Arizona. Um, we're in a van nowadays. We did we did spend like 13 years in a bus that uh, oh okay that was Meatloaf's old tour bus. We, we bought it <laughs> three million miles. <laughs> That's and awesome. We 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 know Meatloaf's daughter, so that's that's fun. Really? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Amanda's really fun. <laughs> we used to. Uh, this was an '85 Eagle, and it had six bunks in it, and two lounges, and mirrors on the ceiling. And we used to play the "Bat Out of Hell" DVD when we would drive when nice. we would pull into truck stops, so you could hear Meatloaf talking in the bus. And we had the marquee on the front that said "Meatloaf" on it. So all <laughs> the truckers would come from everywhere and and come around the bus and try to. See <laughs> Meet, meet dude. We would always make up stories of why he wasn't on the bus or what, what he was on the bus, but he couldn't come out. That kind of <laughs> nah, he's in the <laughs> so can, awesome. man. That's <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Sorry, he's taking a uh, shower right now. So All yeah, right. we, we did spend years in the bus and uh, and now we're back in a van, which is really nice, actually. And then a lot of times I travel in my own van, which is like a full on camper van. And my wife and I have done 130,000 miles in the last three years. Wow. Doing like solo shows in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert and down in Mexico and things like that. So I kind of chase the band in my van nowadays. Wow. But in, I don't know. There's the something, about, there's something about the road it. though. It's yeah. just something about being on the road and you get to see like those wide open spaces. Oh man. You know, speaking. sometimes like getting around off the of 40, and like getting around um, like north of Flagstaff and stuff. It's just like gorgeous country out there. There's And there's nothing around for like hundreds of miles. I love that sometimes. Yep. Specifically up there. We've, been, we've spent some time. I've played some shows in the middle of nowhere up there. And yeah, the, the scenic scenic roads and byways. Yeah, that's my that's whole thing. That's the best like, way, I, man. And, you know, we want to come along for the ride. With ah, the, uh, did there. You see what I did? <laughs> nice. Very nice. uh, Americana folk, man. Okay, let's talk about that genre for a minute because it's now got a new shiny label and it's called Indie, but oh. it's really Americana folk, right? And you guys have been doing it from the dawn of time, in my opinion. <laughs> now you're starting to see the gray in my beard. Yeah. No, we have been doing it a long time. We started as an acoustic duo, which kind of put us in that folk category in our early years and kind of our and then our first record had a band sound, but it was still acoustic. And then we added players and we kind of evolved. And then we became sort of, I don't know, 2000s rockish. You know, we were 90s indie rock Americana. Then we were 2000s rock. Um, but we've always been based on these two songwriters, myself and Mike Butterworth. And so we kind of double dip sometimes. We'll go play as a band and uh, do big shows, big loud rock shows. And then we'll play these acoustic shows sometimes too. And they we can kind of you know, run the gamut. I don't know if that's you know what this sounds like, Barry. This sounds like my favorite band. It sounds like the Mother Hips because the Mother Hips I'm do saying. that. And then and then Tim and Greg go out as the ballpoint birds um, and do acoustic shows every now and then. And that's another reason why I brought up Chico because they're from Chico and they're my favorite band. And you guys kind of sound like them. And you right. guys, I, why what, you have never no, played together played before. Together. It's so weird. So very weird to me. Well, for us, so. California is so far away. You know, for like we no. we from the Midwest for the most of our career, and then back in the day, we would go to California and New York like once a year. And yeah, yeah, and it's it's it's, it's difficult. You a lot of times you're gonna just stay in your in in your home range where you can like drive 500 miles. You know, yep. it's like and it's the same thing for bands out here. They do like the coast tour, right? But how how often do they, do they get past Vegas? Right. Very rarely, because it, it's exp it's it gets those expensive. Mountains. Those mountains are just so Mount harsh. You could get you could get snowed in, and you'd have to like eat your drummer. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's the drummer; they're easily replaceable. <laughs> no, our, our Midwest range for all these years has been like, uh, you know, Des Moines is the center, and so we'd play Chicago to Denver, <clears throat> Minneapolis to Dallas. And then mm -hmm. all around in there. And that left a lot of cities and it, and it gave us a whole career, you know? So then we would just, we play Arizona a lot because there's tons of Iowans in Arizona. Um, right. And then we would play, you know, we'd hit the corners. Why is there tons of Iowans in Arizona? I'm confused because of college. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's. Or is that just like wherever sun. all the Iowans go? I think it's, it's just snow. Yeah. There was just like a famous Iowan once that's like, did you hear Lenny moved to Phoenix. <laughs> we should, I think we all got to go now. 
I think that's why there's <laughs> millions of people there. <laughs> it's not just islets everywhere, but there are a lot of islands. And all yeah. those ones all over the country, like years ago, planted these seeds for us, or, or we planted the seeds and these islands kind of brought their friends. And then now we can go anywhere. And there's a whole bunch of islands and then a whole bunch of people from there that are fans too. And it worked out great. Yeah. I know one guy from Iowa, only one. I know thousands of people. I know one, two Iowans now. Probably nice know. to meet you. Yeah. But the first Iowan that I met was like the, he's the friendliest guy that I know. He's just not an ounce of, I guess you call it Californian anger in him. You know, he's never mad about anything. He always just rolls with it. Is he's like a husker? You call is that like a derogatory no, term? No, no, don't say that to Iowans. Don't oh, call an Iowan a corn husker. Woof. Or did you mean a huckster? A huckster. What's his name? I probably know him because you know I. You <laughs> he, he all hang out. Uh, it's funny. Oh, you're from Des Moines. So, Do you know Jeff? <laughs> I, I play those games all the time because more often than not, I'm, I do know somebody, you know, somehow. That's funny. <laughs> That's so funny. That's funny. Hey, so what do you like? Uh, what do you like doing more? Do you like performing or making the music? I'm sure that you guys like being out there on the road, but what fills your cup more? Is it m like coming up with original songs with um, the other guy, Mike? Yep. Mike, right? Yeah. Uh, or is it going out there? Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's almost a favorite question, isn't it? Almost. But I mean, to, to be honest, like, I love writing the song. Sometimes it's really hard writing the songs. But once I have written songs or even in the process of writing the songs, it's super fulfilling. And then the way the songs live on for, forever has been really fulfilling that I've only, you know, sort of starting to starting to appreciate at this stage of my career, how some of these songs have been with us the whole time. And they've been through generations of people, you know, and um so that's that's really awesome, but I do love the travel and I love the interacting with people and meeting people and discovering new things and just the adventure of it all. I think that's what really motivates me. Um, so a little bit of both, you know, the storytelling and songwriting and and uh, putting it on a record and then chasing it around the country. Are you, are you guys family friendly now? Are you seeing are you seeing like your older fans that you had back in the 90s bringing their kids to your shows now? Absolutely. Yeah. And their parents. Oh, that's so cool, man. That's yeah. super cool. Actually, when we had little kids, so our so our little, you know, our kids are almost adults now. But when we had little kids, we put out a kid's record called Bright Eyed and Bushy Tailed. And we did a kid's tour all over the country. Nice. And it was brutal. Like playing. For <laughs> was it? Oh, my God. <laughs> brutal. So we you weren't the Wiggles, record. is that what you're saying? Right. We did one record, <laughs> one tour. Um, but yeah, no, we're family friendly. We we don't swear too much. We don't have that much questionable, you know. Like we have a song called Drink It Till It's Gone, which is like a drinking song, except for I always if there's a lot of kids in the crowd, I say it's about it's about juice boxes, how you you can't quite get that last little bit out of a juice box and you're like slurping trying to get it out. <laughs> So yeah, we're even. Even our drinking songs are family friendly. See, I just love the fact that uh, you know people are are continuing that down through a gener down through generations. You know, it's um. I always found it interesting to see where people get their uh, musical inspirations from, and you know, a lot of that comes from from family or or you know, like my dad liked this music, so I kind of like gravitated toward that or. Oh, my dad liked this music, so I stayed away from everything like that. It was like one or the two, yep. either really jump on to, oh, I really like folk music because my dad does, or I hate folk music because my dad does. Or, I'm going to go just the opposite. Um, I initially went just the opposite and I went into punk rock. Mm -hmm. And then I got older and I started rediscovering like stuff that my dad liked and was like, oh, wow. Gordon Lightfoot, it's actually pretty talented. Yeah, you know, there's like some good stuff there. You know, it's um. so I, I, I've come back to it, but I really like uh, seeing how, you know, your fans are bringing their kids and like understanding like music is multi-generational and it can be a connecting force. So that's nice to see. Absolutely. Yeah, I think our biggest demogra like growing demographic is empty nesters right now who are maybe just a little bit older than we are, but they're like, Hey, remember how we used to go out for music all the time? And that's what we did for fun. Yeah. Let's do that again. So in the audience, there's a lot of that. But then there's a lot of, of their kids that are like it's awesome. early adults that are doing their thing and, and enjoying what their parents do. So, so it's a good All right. Story. Well, 
you're from Iowa. You're here in California. You're playing Zebulon. Ooh, Zebulon. But I would like to ask you a couple of questions about your dietary habits while you're on the West Coast. Are you eating <laughs> things that are not Iowanian? Right? Iowanian. I'm just constantly <laughs> looking for, you know, pork pork chops and, uh, uh, you know, potatoes and, and uh, barbecue. You're out for the barbecue. barbecue. No, I'm, I'm. Oh wait, where is that? What was that big? What's that good barbecue place over here in the valley? Ah, uh, because that's I got to. Oh, here we go. No, See, no, actually, can can I turn the question to you and say what should I? Eat? Yeah, like I, I love. Well, that's where it's going because Joe here. Joe's where's middle name is uh, Yelp. It's his middle name, okay. and uh, he has all <laughs> of the top tens in the place. <clears throat> What part oh, no, of there's, LA there's, there's are this you? There's one in? really good. There's this one really good barbecue place. If I can remember where it is, it's I haven't been there for a while. You're, you're staring. Not staring. There it is. There it is. You are. Got it. What is it? Got it. Doc Hoggly Woggly's Tyler Texas style barbecue. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's probably Pacific. one of the best barbecue places in the entire city. It is over in the valley on Sepulveda and Roscoe. Oh right. no, you don't want to go there, dude. Mm -mm. <laughs> What's wrong? Stay away with that? from that the place valley. all together. Hey, the mm -mm. valley is not bad, and Doc Hoggly Woggly's is really good. If you do, where like, are you staying now? You're probably staying somewhere like coastal, like really nice. Probably no, no, no we're staying near the, well near the venue, but I don't really know where that is. But I think the, uh, <laughs> there's an opener. Um, we have two openers for that show. Emma Butterworth, who is my partner's daughter. I should have told you that a long time ago. Oh. And she's got a couple of records out. She was in Chicago, and she's coming to open the show. And then Kaylee Stenberg from the band Bodies, um, who's, who lives out there. And so she told us to stay near Frogtown, which yeah. I think... Oh, okay. oh yeah, you're going to be right in Frogtown. That's going to be play. Yeah. That's going to be great. There's yeah. um, Oh, in Frogtown, there's a oh, really go. cool uh, brewery right there. Yeah, um, it's called Frogtown literally... Brewery. <laughs> and it's literally like a block away from the Zebulon. All right, perfect. So oh, that cool. place is gonna be that place is gonna be great. Um, it's called Frogtown because it's this really weird part of Los Angeles that's like kind of hard to get into. Um, it's like trapped between the five freeway and the Los Angeles River. And okay. so it's like this little thin strip of residential area that became like this funky artist community. Because they were kind of like trapped in on themselves. It's it's gonna be perfect for you guys. I, I'm yeah, you. dude. I I lived there for a year and a half next door to a sauerkraut factory. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. It's delicious. Do you yeah, like sauerkraut now, or are you over it? Oh no. Ugh. <laughs> who who does? You guys are weird. Yeah. I, I, maybe that's what they eat in Iowa. We do eat a lot of sauerkraut, but nowadays we eat a lot of kimchi too. You know, it's a global Oof. it's a global world. Mm. kimchi kimchi freaking love it oh because it's all the same stuff yeah it's just different vegetables but it's like all fermented in there it's oh man I didn't know that. that's good you stuff. learned something oh. yeah all right well let's talk about this new song come along for the ride tell us about your latest music that's out now if we can't make it to the show tomorrow night at zebulon we can download your tunes yeah tell us please. About so this record come along for the ride we actually made it with uh, our producer who lives out there his name's alex deason He's from the band The Damn Wells, which was a, a great band in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I think they're doing new music now, too. So, um, But yeah, we recorded it uh, over the course of a year. My partner, Mike, set up a studio in this old junior high school that was abandoned and opened to uh, like people renting studio space. So we oh, set up a cool. studio there and we, we spent pretty much all last year writing and recording it, um, which was fun because the last record we did we wrote it in 10 days and then recorded it in two weeks. So this was, Oh, fun. wow. That is so <laughs> fast. Yeah. <laughs> Which that one was fun too, you know? So it's just fun to have a kind of a different approach and change things up. And this one, we really took our time and because it was Mike's studio, we could do whatever we want, you know? So mm -hmm. our friend from Los Angeles would fly in for a week at a time and we'd write together and he would work on it. And then he recorded some out there. And so, um, yeah, so it's got that song and it's got some some other kind of uh, I don't know because both of our kids are making music now and and uh, out there playing for people and writing their own songs. We kind of there's a little bit of uh, I don't know advice maybe hidden inside of songs 
on this record that's just a little bit of a kind of like letters to the younger generation of musicians um not that i think of ourselves as an old generation of musicians we've just been doing it a while you know yeah well but, since the 90s you are I, I hate to break it to you <laughs> you're well how we, many we years is that i don't even know <laughs> it's three. this is part of that what i say this 49 birthday this hits harder for like it's making me think about things all differently but but uh so it hits a little harder but yeah there i think there is some wisdom like people are like oh man you made it through the digital evolution of music yeah. and like the way i look at it we made it through like 10 evolutions of yeah of music. oh man you know, like, mm. it's it's constantly changing we're constantly trying to figure it out so um and you start you started when cds were new we started <laughs> We started when it was weird for a band that wasn't on a major label to make a CD. Like, right? Literally, just didn't know how. Like, you could, you know, they knew how to go and record, but then they're like, "Wait, you can make your own CD." So, and we still like duplicate our CDs with that guy that we worked with way back then, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and you were, you, I mean, you started uh, in the era of people uh, getting soundboard recordings and you know trading cassette tapes of live shows. And sending those like across the country, like, hey, man, I got the nadas from yada, yada, yada on this date. I'll send you this cassette if you could send me your recording of the dead from the Fillmore in, you know, 69 or something. <laughs> and like that was like, man, you went from that to CDs to uh, like DVD live videos to yep. the the advent of like Napster and digital music through the entire streaming wars, yep. you know, now we're basically back to people finding indie bands, recording them on CDs and sending those CDs out or like just sharing digital files all over the place. Yep. So it's all come full circle. All those evolutions. The big difference now, though, and I, I wish I'm just going to use random numbers that are that I believe. Sure. To be true. But I think when we started, I bet there were like maybe 20 or 30,000 maybe records released in a year, maybe. And nowadays there's 20 million tracks released on Spotify every year. So crazy. So even if you just yeah. pulled all those records, that'd be two million records compared to like. I, I can't believe that, you know, in the early 90s, there were more than 20 or 30,000. Even that seems like a lot compared to what seemed like was going on back then. Like you could go to a record store and they'd have almost every record that was put out that year, you know. Oh, so, let's find out. Well, I've tried to like research that and there's not a lot because there was no Internet. Oh, really? No. Oh, oh but, there was there was an Internet. That, I mean, I that's a good point. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the kind of evolutions that we went through. And, you know, we still make CDs, which a lot of people are like, why you do that? Nobody has a CD player, which is true. <laughs> but it's like the way we know how to package it and hand it to someone, you know? And um, I have two funny things related to that, where like I did a solo record two years ago and I went out in my van and played all over the place and I made CDs. But I, I kept hearing from people saying that, you know, like we don't have a CD player, you know, we'll buy your CD. But we don't have a CD player. So I bought like two dozen portable disc man style cd players from amazon they were nice. 18 dollars. they had bluetooth they had a 24 hour battery and a two minute anti-skip and so you could just <laughs> them to your car and so i gave away a free cd player with every cd purchase for ten dollars so, <laughs> so i lost you know 18 dollars every time i gave away a cd but i still think it was good business you know yeah um, that's a genius move thank you thank you i'm still working if only you could do it wholesale then you're in then you're in the money yeah, I've thought I've thought about uh, doing that, but there's no like CD manufacturer, CD player manufacturers yeah. in America that you can really work with. So, right. um, yeah. the other thing is, I was playing a show recently where these little kids got up and were like air guitaring, and I handed them two guitars and they played. And afterwards, I was like, "Here's some CDs, guys, for like for your work. You know, here's your pay for your gig." And and they're like, "What's this?" And I'm like, "It's." They were like 10, <laughs> ten years old. I'm like, "It's a CD." And I'm like, "Do, do you does your does anyone have a CD player in your family? And they're like, I think my grandpa does. And I'm like, oh no, that's the first time it skipped a whole generation for me of who would have a CD player. It was their grandpa who would have a CD player. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, wow. it's all still well, about music, right? And, and about yep. connecting and, with people and, and however we can do that. That's what yep. we do. Time marches on no matter what. Uh, no matter what. There's nothing you can do about it. Time keeps going. 
And uh, okay, so let's play the song "Come Along for the Ride." Now, you got anything to say about it before we spin it? Uh, you know, this is just sort of an easygoing kind of summer road trip and song. Um, I've done a lot of that lately, and so I uh, that's that's where the idea came from was just to come along for the ride and road trip it. So pretty simple song. I love it. Let's go. Uh, everybody get in the car. Come along for the ride. Jason, thanks for coming on from the Nadas. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason.